Not gonna bury the lead on this one. This release is great. This is the Executioner Collection from Arrow Home Video. This is two films and it, starring Sonny Chiba, who you may know from, uh, I mean, he's in Kill Bill, but he, the thing that really brought him to fame here was the Street Fighter movies, but then he made a ton of other movies, The Bodyguard and on and on and on. Uh, Executioner Collection is two films he made in 1974, the year I was born actually, from uh, Toei Studios and these are phenomenal. I've never seen these before. I think I've heard of them. I don't know how easily these were to get your hands on in America up to this point. They probably have had releases, but first of all, out of the gate, it's Arrow. So they look gorgeous. They look, colors are phenomenal. They look super sharp and crisp. Um, it's two films. He plays the same character in both. And both are sort of like, like caper team mission heist kind of movies. First one is, uh, as I say, The Executioner. And uh, Chiba is this guy who was, was trained in, in ninja arts. So we see him training as a kid, but it's really the opening of the film is this, I think a police inspector, I think, putting a team together, a team of like thieves and rapscallions together to try to thwart this mafia group that's bringing drugs into Japan. So it's all these people on the team have their skills and it's really funny. At first I thought, oh, this movie is just goofy and cheesy. And then I'm like, no, this is intentionally a comedy and it's funny. And it's it's just crazy and insane. Like <laughs> at one point they're talking about Chiba and uh, the, the camera cuts and he's like on the ceiling with his hands pressed against the corners of the wall, just sitting there watching everybody. And then he drops down. So he uses his, his ninja skills often. Um, there's a scene in the movie where they're outside a casino at night and Chiba is fighting off a, a group of assailants, accosters, and he dips his hands and or feet into paint that happens to be there. And as he's beating the crap out of everybody, he's leaving, you know, multicolored handprints. So like one guy gets in each hand and each foot has a different color. So one guy has like, you know, green and purple on his face and every it's footprints and handprints all over these guys as, you know, the neon flashes in the back. It's just super visual and super creative and a lot of fun. And uh, I loved it. The Executioner is wonderful. It's just totally over the top. It's like, it's like the Street Fighter movie movies, but not as serious. So there are elements of uh, a heist film, a caper film, uh, people on a mission film, a spy film, uh, martial arts, obviously, uh, the f wonderful funky soundtrack. The theme song has the the, the wee, that whatever you want to call it, a, a whoopee whistle or whatever, <laughs> used repeatedly in the theme and on the menu too. And I was just like, I put the menu in and I'm like, oh my God, if the soundtrack to this film features one of those whoopee whistles throughout, this is gonna be one of the best things I've seen in a while. And I think it might've been one of the best things I've seen in a while. So Executioner 2 made the same year. Uh, the, the band gets back together. This time they, uh, a jewel has been, a precious jewel from a foreign dignitary has been stolen. And uh, the daughter of the person who owns the jewel has been kidnapped and they have to go and, and they have to go and get it back. And so it's just, again, it's breaking into a fortress movie. It's uh, thwarting the kidnappers movie. It's getting the kid back movie. And it's even more ridiculous than the first film was. And when I say ridiculous, I mean ridiculous in all the best ways. It, the, the, the martial arts are crazy. The, the villains are weird and perverse and crazy. The, the action is wildly over the top in the best way. And once again, in the day before CGI, uh, it really did all this stuff. If you saw a car barrel roll and explode, it was a real car, it wasn't a cartoon car. If you saw a guy jump off something at a great height, probably wasn't that high a height, but it's really somebody jumping off something and landing on something. I mean, it's just, I, I love practical effects. I love 70s into the 80s action. Uh, well, I guess into the 90s for the Hong Kong stuff, action and martial arts and all that. And um, it's just, it's, it, it made me, these films made me very, very happy. So extras, there are extras on this. So for The Executioner, you can watch it one of two ways. You can watch the uh, English language version or the uh, Japanese version. Japanese version, of course, has subtitles. English version will have English titles and English uh, dialogue for you to hear. The Executioner 2 is only in Japanese with English subtitles. And uh, there's a commentary on The Executioner by my close personal friend, Clarice Pajali, co-author with Grady Hendrix of These Fists Break Bricks, one of the best books I read last year, last week. Wish I read them that often. One of the best books I read in the last year, and it's all about uh, martial arts films and how they uh, made an impact in America. That's Chris Pajali and Mark Walcott, who I also sort of know, a uh, Japanese uh, film expert, and they give a really fun, interesting talk about The Executioner in which you get 
the the film, the history of its release, the history of everybody who made it, the uh, history of Chiba, and all that stuff. So that's a really, really fun commentary, as, as they always are with those guys. Uh, then you get a featurette with, I'm looking over here, a featurette on, about Sonny Chiba with Chris P., Grady Hendrix, co-author of These Fists Made Bricks, and many other actual wonderful um, horror novels. Grady is a really good writer. And uh, Tom Mess and Marco Joaquim, who has, if I may div divulge, diverge, and diverticulate a little bit. Marco Joaquim, as a teenager, as a young teenager, was greatly responsible for Bruce Lee being seen on the big screen in this country. And uh, he was sort of a keystone in that whole Kung Fu movie explosion. Basically, the deal is his father was a film distributor. His father got the rights to put out a Green Hornet film, basically just taking episodes of the Green Hornet TV show, which featured Bruce Lee, and re edited them into a feature film. And Marco was his young son who actually got the original 16 prints and edited them together into features. <laughs> the editor of that Bruce Lee theatrical Green Hornet compilation movie was a kid. And this kid apparently was a consultant for his father on what Bruce Lee movies to put out. <laughs> and had a hand in the executioner stuff. It's just, it's amazing. So that, it's a really fun, um, it's a really fun uh, little documentary featurette. That runs uh, about a half hour. And then we have uh, Teru Ichi filmography. This is just a click through filmography for the director of this film who did quite a bit. And if you're into this sort of thing, uh, several movies you have heard of. You have uh, trailers for the Japanese and English versions of Executioner 1 and 2. And I'm um, sorry, J Japanese and English trailer for Executioner, the first one which was released here, and Japanese only trailer for Executioner 2, which wasn't released here. And then you get an image gallery, which is uh, two image galleries for each, one for each film, and it's uh, 27 and 23 images. Uh, so I really, really like this. This is a, this is one that uh, if I was talking to friends and they were like, are there any era releases I should buy? I would say Executioner Collection. The Angela Mao Collection, Executioner Collection. They're so much fun. Don't let the fact that some of this is subtitled throw you off. It is a ton of fun and super wacky and memorable. And these are movies that, this is the kind of thing where I see these movies and I'm like, how did I never know about these before? How did these never come across my plate until now? Um, I loved it. The Executioner Collection, available now from Arrow Home Video on Blu-ray. Uh, 